I've wanted to make a video like this for a good while now. And after the last, I would say, you know, 72 hours or so, I've been convicted that I need to make this video. I started YouTube back in 2021. It's kind of wild to think that it's been three years. And for the most part, it's been a pretty enjoyable journey from the people you get to know to talking with the fans to being able to have good discussions about faith and doctrine uh, in this Catholic context. However, I want to say something. Through observation from both in public, seeing how other content creators behave, um, as well as seeing how content creators behave in private, I can genuinely tell the Catholic faithful, the Catholic YouTube, quote-unquote, that 99% of it is an absolute joke and a cesspool. What do I mean by this? A little bit of behind the scenes, if you will. When people get on YouTube for, for Catholic content, etc., they typically are looking for information about faith and doctrine. That's what you would think, right? No. In fact, Catholic YouTube has devolved down into smear merchants, TMZ-style reporting, conspiracy theories, and hot takes. That is all Catholic YouTube has devolved down into. Whereas maybe a decade or so, you would have YouTubers coming on in the Catholic context talking about, you know, the Summa Theologiae, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the writings of this or said Pope or Saint— we don't do that anymore, and it's not being done. And you know why it's not being done? Because it doesn't make money, because it doesn't make popularity and fame. The reality is, is that most of the content creators that you guys watch just at the end of the day um, are flying by the seat of their pants trying to make a buck and know that if they have catchy titles and scandalous, right, exposed style videos about another said Catholic YouTuber or about a said prelate in the church, that they will rack in the views, that they will rack in the money, and that they will become popular. And for me, you know, at the end of the day, when I look back and I sit down and I say, you know, are we actually accomplishing the mission of Christ? Are we converting more people to the truth of the gospel? Are we actually changing people's lives through the content that we make? I don't see that intention in the minds of so many individuals. I don't see the love of Christ for, like in the forefront of their minds, I see the love of money, the love of fame, the love of popularity, and the love of just being right. It's nothing more than video pride, if you will. You have your pride, you manifest it to the world. When I look at this, think about this for a minute. When you look at all the Catholic content creators today, right, the big names, if you will, the, the bigger names, is it really about the Catholic faith, right, the deposit of faith? Are they walking through the doctrines of the faith? Are they going through catechisms of the church? Or is it about... Pope Francis said this, or this YouTuber said that, and I need to expose them, or I am the true Catholic person. I am going to expose the dissenters. I'm going to make a 400-minute video about why this person is wrong. At the end of the day, I've just lost a lot of hope because I see that these individuals, it's about making money. It's about fame. It's about popularity with them. And it's not saving anyone. In fact, it is damning more people, if anything else, because it damns the souls of the creators because all it does is it causes division, it causes blackpilling, it causes disunity, whether or not you want to call someone a modernist or whether or not you want to call someone a dissenter and a schismatic or a crypto sede. Everyone thinks that they're right. And I place a lot of this blame, of course, right, on Pope Francis, not because I don't recognize him as Pope, but I see Pope Francis in, in many ways analogous to President Biden. President Biden came in with the mandate that he was going to unite the people of the United States, and the Pope, by default, is supposed to unite people, but he's supposed to unite people around the truth of faith, around the deposit of faith. And Pope Francis, whether you like him and you think he's the greatest thing since sliced bread and he can't sin because, you know, infallible safety net, 
or if you think that he is, you know, this Antichrist Bergolian heretic, etc., regardless of what your views are, we can all agree that at best he's failed in the mission of unifying Catholics around Catholic faith and morals. When you have heretics like Father James Martin and the Psalter Rupnik running around completely in canonical norms and everything's fine, and Bishop Schneider is canned because, you know, hey, I don't like you, or Burke, I'm going to take away your apartment and make you homeless because I don't like you. It's a joke. It's a complete and utter joke. And then the content creators get on, and they start debating between themselves. So you have, of course, on the one side, and I'm not saying this again to bash individuals, but you have, on the one hand, Taylor Marshall, whose whole career is let's talk about Pope Francis, and Michael Lofton, whose whole career is to talk about Taylor Marshall. There is no middle ground. There is no just discussion on the deposit of faith. Again, there are some Catholic YouTubers out there who do a really great job. As an example, Brian Holdsworth, absolute G, great dude. Why? Because he talks about philosophy. He talks about dogma. Does he talk about some current events in the church? Yes, and there's nothing wrong with that. But he doesn't obsess in this TMZ inquirer style fashion of clickbaity titles and clickbait videos and expose stuff over and over and over again. He's a, he's a good guy because he does that. When I look at other co Catholic content creators, I see maybe they don't dip into you know the TMZ style drama, but maybe what they do is they don't really say anything. So as an example, and again, I'm not bashing this guy. This is just kind of my cons constructive criticism. So so chill out. When it comes to something like Pints with Aquinas, as an example, good show overall, right? You see major issues, right? They're so worried about people becoming sedes, but at the same time, they won't just say, okay, Pope Francis, you are being scandalous and you are causing people to become sedes. You are the biggest creator of the sedes out there, you know? And, and so it's just a joke to me. It's like, okay, can't you see the problem? The problem is the guy, he's not unifying people around the deposit of faith. I've fallen into this nonsense too. I've made videos that have been clickbaity before in the past, and you know what? I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm more or less kind of ashamed of that because that's not even Nick. That's not even Nicholas Cavazos. So everything is just – it's just devolved down into smear merchant tactics. And I can tell you from behind the scenes, these Catholic content creators, they don't like each other. They – bash one another. They violate the Eighth Commandment all the time. I have broken the Eighth Commandment to my shame, falling into this type of trap. And I've seen Catholics, as a result, become more and more bitter. How many Catholics out there, right, because of the whole situation with Israel and Gaza, have taken stark stances? As an example, I see trads, myself, right, who was in that camp, if you will, I've seen trads in my camp go so far in their criticism of Israel that they are legitimizing Nazi Germany. And they think Hitler was fine, and, and all of World War II history is just a joke, and everything's fine, and hunky-dory, and maybe segregation's a thing, et cetera, et cetera. All kinds of just nonsense. I'm like, fine for me, that ideology in the Gospels. Fine for me, that in the epistles. Where do you see St. Paul talk about this. When he says that we are neither Jew nor Greek, i.e. Gentile, bond or free, male or female, we are all one in Christ Jesus. Do you see that in a lot of these guys online? It's like Catholic Twitter. What is Catholic Twitter? It's nothing more than a vanity pride show of people giving their hot takes who is right. On the one hand, you have the trads over here. You have the Groyper papal respecters over here. Who's right? Let's cite our sources and yada, 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 and condemn each other to hell. I'm not saying that we all need to be kumbaya and grab our arms and sing we are the world. What I am saying, though, is that we are a joke to the secular world. We are an absolute joke because we can't even get our own act together. It's like all the Catholics right now. Criticizing uh, our, you know, vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance, and they'll say, you know, he he has this opinion on abortion, which I criticize and condemn, by the way. But at the same time, or they'll say, well, he he prayed at the Wailing Wall in Israel, right? He must be a Zionist, bad guy, fake Catholic. While simultaneously, Pope pictures of Pope Francis are online praying at the Wailing Wall, and they will defend that he's probably praying for their conversion. That's what he's doing, right? We've become a joke.
We become an absolute joke. My heart in this kind of rant, if you will, is I want to see the Catholic Church focus on her mission. And all Catholic content creators, stop attacking one another, and let's focus on our mission. The mission of the church is the Great Commission. It is to give God glory by saving souls. It is Christ who saves the souls, and he gives us that great grace of allowing us to be partakers in that ministry. Is that what Michael Lofton is doing? Is that what Taylor Marshall is doing? Again, I'm not trying to bash those individuals. I'm just trying to constructively criticize some of their work, right? Dudes, if either one of you watch this, right, I don't hate either one of you. But, like, come on, are we actually pushing people to the truth of the gospel? A good analogy for you viewers out there, go and look at videos of people's channels and say, what content do people get more attention from? If I was to put Michael Lofton's name in this show, i get 50,000 views. If I was to put Taylor Marshall's name in this, I'd get 50,000 views. If I make a video on a catechism, a couple hundred views, maybe 1,000, maybe 2,000, that's it. Our priorities are out of balance. We're focusing so much in on popularity, hot takes, the drama, because drama sells. And I don't even expect this video really to make that much of a difference. But you know who I can make a difference for? Me and my life. I don't want to make content that's like smearing people. I don't want to make content giving hot takes and exposés about fellow Catholics. It's one thing to comment on the church, and there's a place for church politics. I'm not saying that. We should have conversation. We, have, we should have robust debates, as I've said. But it's another thing when our entire show, our entire, if you will, ministry, our entire persona online is known for attacking other individuals. At the end of the day, we need to remember Christ's admonition in Matthew chapter 12. You will be judged for every idle word that you say and every idle thing that you do. So what are we doing? What are we doing? For the content creators out there, what are you doing? Are you actually proclaiming the name of Christ? Are you giving people the deposit of faith? Or are you just memeing TMZ style, doing nonsense crap? And then for the viewers out there, what do you want to send your money to? Do you want to send your money to individuals who are just, if you will, peddling this drama? Right? And they can peddle it under this this show and all the finances provide for me and my family. My job is to attack other Catholic content creators online by default. Right? Do you feel comfortable sending your money to that? It's a joke. Last week, right? I think it was last week anyway. Time flies. I had my channel attempted to be hacked into twice because people didn't like my takes on the new mass. I had several hundred, mainly Groypers online, who all tried to hack into my channel. They sent over 250 uh, messages to me through different you know, social media platforms, etc., calling me everything from a heretic to you better not go to sleep tonight because I'm going to find you and murder you, right? That type of wild off-the-wall nonsense. And you know what it was from? It was because they disagreed with me on my takes on the new mass. We are a joke. We are an absolute joke as a church if we can't live for Christ and we can't let the gospel change our own lives. So I'm done. I'm done making drama videos. I'm done making uh, or participating in content in which it's just, you know, let me do my thing for the sake of bilking in money at the expense of hurting other individuals and committing sins myself. When you guys look at the examination of conscience under the Eighth Commandment, detraction, slander, calumny, tail-bearing, that describes Catholic YouTube to a T. It does. So all this to say, for me, I'm done with Catholic church politics. For me, you know, I have my positions. I'm an ultra traditionalist. I go to the Latin Mass exclusively. I think you should too. That's my opinion. I'm fine to have an academic debate on that subject. But for me, I'm done with church politics. Because nothing is going to change in Rome until we have a holy pope. 
Nothing is going to change in Rome until Rome actually starts to respect sacred tradition again and not, you know, on the one hand, cancel bishops who are holy and on the other hand, simultaneously allow rapists to continue doing their thing. We literally have a church which is infested with pedophiles and homosexual activists, and yet Catholic content creators are more interested in attacking each other for views and for patrons than actually just being like, you know what? We demand an overhaul. We demand change. We demand that the truth of the gospel be proclaimed. It's a joke. So I'm not going to cover church politics for the most part anymore. Every once in a while, if there's some big news, I'll talk about it. Right, But I don't want to make my life around church politics. For me, I have to think about what do I want to be remembered for and what do I want Christ to say to me on that last day. And I don't want to spend what little time I have on this earth attacking other Catholics for views and for money. It's despicable. And let me tell you guys, that is what is going on 1,000%. So for the future of this show, what does that mean for Nick? Well, Every single one of you guys that have subscribed to me, that has become a patron, you guys mean the world to me. I would have never believed in my entire life that I would be standing in front of an audience this big, giving you guys my opinions, more or less even you guys wanting to hear my opinions. I'm not, I'm not really anybody special. But for me, what I'm passionate about is I'm passionate about Christ transforming lives, and I'm passionate about Christ's truth transforming society. So for me, I think going forward, I'm going to talk about basically two things. I'm going to avoid the church politics stuff, again, for the most part. I'm going to continue my series on Catholic doctrine. So if you're wanting to actually study Catholic teaching, etc., and you're okay with the fact that I'm an ultra-traditionalist, um, then stick around. Right? I'm going to be teaching, continuing through the catechisms. I'm going to be going through some dogmatic manuals, some moral manuals, fundamental manuals. Right? These are Catholic theological schools. We're going to be doing that mostly in the fall, continuing. But I want a lot of this. I'm going to be talking also a lot about U.S. politics and world politics and talking about how can we bring the truth of the gospel and the truth of Christ to that said world. I'm very interested in seeing society change because unlike a lot of trads that I see online who act in some ways like leftists in the sense that they bash the United States 24 freaking 7, I want to actually see America change. In many ways, I want to see America restored. I'm actually a patriot. I actually don't dislike the United States of America. I think that while we have flaws, as every country does, we also have many good virtues. And I want to be in the line of my family. My family has fought for the United States, not just through the military. If you want to look at, as an example, Richard Cavazos, right, who a, a fort was just named after recently, who – not really nuts about that because it was kind of a DEI nonsense reason. But Richard Cavazos, first Hispanic four-star general, that's my great uncle. My grandfather, Lotto Cavazos, right? First Hispanic secretary of education under Ronald Reagan and George H. Bush. They were great Americans. God rest both of their souls. But I want to continue in their line. I want to do what is best for my country and for my church. And for me, what's best is to focus on Christ. And then lives will be changed. All right, everyone. Thank you guys so much, I guess, for hearing this rant. No links in the descriptions today. If you really do want to support me and you actually kind of you know, relate with what I'll say, I guess I'll put my patron link in the, in the bottom if you want to help me out that way. I appreciate it. But yeah, I'm kind of just tired. I'm kind of just tired of the drama. I'm kind of just tired of the, the stupidity, to be honest, because that's all that it is. Catholic YouTube is a cesspool. A cesspool of iniquity, a tomb full of rottenness. It, it's just ridiculous. I guess my last thing I'll say is this. If you're a content creator out there, we can do so much better. Michael Lofton, you can do so much better. You have like a freaking 500 you know, video playlist on traditionalism. You've made that your freaking career. Talk about the gospel instead. Talk about the catechism instead. Talk about the truths of faith instead. And if you'd respond to this video and you're just, you know, criticizing me, it's whatever, dude. You're just proving my point. That's all that it is. If Taylor Marshall, you see this video, look, I agree with a lot of the criticisms you say. But you know what? We should talk way more about the deposit of faith than about every little thing that's going on in Rome. 
it's fine to point people to the Latin mass. That's what I do. But at the same time, if our entire platform is nothing more than criticizing the Bergolian church and how, you know, like, for instance, you know, peddling said a lines like, oh, do you think Pope Francis is a heretic? Let me put this in the poll, you know, and are, are you really helping the unity of the church or are you just trying to have a hot take? Again, this is not me hating on you. I don't hate you, man. Um, it's just kind of my concerns. To the rest of my content creators out there, it's like, what are you going to do? What do you want to be remembered as? So all this being said, you know, whether or not you agree with me, you disagree with me, it's whatever. But I think that we just need to have some major changes because when you look at the reality, it's the Catholic Church, it's so divided. I mean, the fact that you have on the one hand a trad recovery conference, which has just been made a meme now, uh, and you know, people are kind of peddling that over there. And on the other end, you have, you know, Archbishop Vigano, who's excommunicated and uh, you know, all all of his supporters over there, right, calling everybody, right, who disagrees a heretic, etc. The fact that you have these pulling sides and they're pulling everybody apart and we're not actually focusing on the doctrine, which is Rome's fault, by the way, um, it really goes to show you just how ridiculous things have become. So, yeah, all that being said, I'm just taking a step back and I'm not doing this anymore uh, in the sense of covering church politics 24-7. It's just a joke. I'm going to be covering Catholic doctrine. I'm going to be covering U.S. politics. I'm going to be covering uh, things that actually can make a difference. We can make a difference. And if you're just blackpilled on voting, then, oh, well, you're blackpilled on voting, and you'll just be blackpilled on everything. So is what it is. All that being said, guys, let's go be saints. Let's go, by God's grace, and clean out all of the rottenness that is in our souls. You know, it's like I say, if you're a trad out there and you're criticizing you know, the Jews 24-7, but then at the same time you're watching porn. According to the Council of Trent, you're crucifying Christ. If you're a porn addict out there and you're also giving Catholic hot takes on Twitter, come on, bro. Come on. We will be judged by every single thing that we say. I want to be a man who loves his future wife and children well, who loves his church well, and who loves his country. That's all I've ever wanted. Never wanted to be popular. Never wanted to be famous. But I want people to change. If you're, you know, one of those papal respecters out there who is thinks everyone who criticizes Pope Francis in the slightest is just this rank heretic, schismatic dissenter, crypto sede. Okay, are you rashly judging people in your heart? St. Paul says to not judge rashly anybody in your heart, to not have bitterness in your heart toward anyone. Do you guys have bitterness in your heart toward the trads? Trads, do you have bitterness in your heart toward Pope Francis? We all got to conform our lives to the New Testament because if it's not that, then it's just a joke. We're, we're, living, we're living corpses without the life of divine grace in us. So we need to do better. All right, everyone, thanks for hearing my rant. Just go be saints. That's all I want to say. Go be saints.